As you can see, it's not within the program. Uh, we decided to change the program because we already had two uh, lectures on public procurement. So I'll do something else. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, by the way. Thanks for the invitation, and so on and so on. Um, why do I want to teach this one and also the next one? Uh, there's two reasons. First of all, I am here for my fifth time, and I always teach different lectures. And three of the previous things I've taught here have been published in GMCB, German Development Economics, and German Foreign Economics. So I thought, I like this paper. <laughs> I want it to be published, <laughs> so let's present it. It's like a bit superstition. If I present it here, it will go well. Uh, the second thing is, it's a good example of how the summer school could work. This paper, and actually also the next paper I will talk about, are about the consequences of the summer school. This project started last year, the last evening, while drinking a beer. That's how it started. So I, uh, I urge you, if you have good ideas while having karaoke, do not lose them. Keep your ideas. They could be really actually working out. Uh, I'll start with this quote. I'll read it out for you. Were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter because once they, the people, become inattentive to the public affairs, you and I and Congress and assemblies, judges and governors shall all become wolves. So it's about how people monitor politics, essentially. And of course, to be able to monitor politics, to be able to discipline politics, you need free media. You need a media that actually tells you what is going on. So how did this uh, paper start? Uh, last year, in the last evening, we were drinking beer in the bar with Nikita Zakharov, and he told us a story of his babushka. Re it, really true. He told us, you know what happened to my babushka? Last year, we gave her for the first time a television. And within a few months, she started to talk about foreigners really badly. She said, oh, these American imperialists, why don't, they, why don't they like us and they should go home? And she became very negative about foreigners. And then what he, what he did, uh, at the television, he kind of uh, included TV Dost. And TV Dost is a television channel which can only uh, be seen on internet, but you can actually put it on a TV channel. So they put uh, TV Dost on, and after two weeks, she became very critical of Putin. <laughs> and so he thought, this is kind of a cool story, you know? I told the story two nights ago on the party. Remember the party? Was it last night? No, two nights ago. The party we had with the guys of the uh, New Economic School. And there was another guy, Sergei, and he said, Oh, I have a story just like that. My babushka uh, last summer came over my house for two weeks because they had, she had remonts. And he listens to uh, Echo Masqui. So she had to listen for two weeks to Echo Masqui. And she completely changed her mind. She became very critical too. So I said, Ah, we are onto something. So we, we started uh, uh, bootstrapping against each other, said, okay, could we actually do something with this? If this is true, is, is it just an anecdote? Is it just funny? Or uh, can we use this to actually measure the effect of propaganda? So that's what we're going to talk about. So what is the main idea? We're going to use TV Rain as an experiment. And the subject of the experiment is the Russian population. And we're going to randomly distribute access to TV Rain, the independent media, and see whether it affects voting behavior. <coughs> that's, that's what we did. It's not a paper yet, but it's a set of results and a story. <laughs> okay. It's a bit of an <coughs> expensive story, but we actually have to pay a lot to do this. But it's, a, it's very funny to do, I should say. And there's the research question. Is an independent media going to change the monopoly of the, pa of the party? So this is not actually unique to Russia, very far from it. There's many countries having very comparable, comparable systems, actually also in Europe. Remember Berlusconi in Italy? He had the same thing, right? He had a, an, a close to monopoly on the media, and the media were broadcasting basically his face all the time, and a lot of stupid shows with lots of girls and, and nonsense. But basically it was a kind of propaganda machine. For, for a long time. So it's, it's definitely not unique to Russia. And there's many countries where media uh, is kind of monopolized by some kind of government. So it's a good question. Do autocratic regimes, do they use media to remain in power and to reinforce their political monopoly? That's the, the question you're going to ask. There's some literature about it, not a lot. This one study uh, uh, from Leeson 
and he shows it's a cross-country study, so identification there is very weak, but he's the first. If you're the first, you can do this cross-country study. The same with all kinds of topics. You have papers on financial development and growth, financial development and inequality, and the first one is always like a cross-country study. But then later on people say, yes, endogeneity, causality, reverse causality, omitted feral bias, you know, you know the rest, eh? and then you have to do something else. So this first guy shows indeed that if you have more freedom across countries, you have more political knowledge and more participation. If people have information, they go to vote and they know what they're voting for, essentially. You have the study of Baroni very recently, uh, and he looks at Barosconi. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and they also it's like quasi-experimental. It's not a real experiment, but you have a distribution of the of a certain TV channel in certain regions and certain places. So they use the geocoding of people who can watch it and cannot watch it, and they see that the introduction of a new digital TV, not uh, captured by Berlusconi, actually reduced the vote share of his party. Forza Italia, I believe, right? Uh, 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 and uh, it's it's uh, of course the title. Uh, defies the, the purpose, but okay. Um, it's not streaming TV, right? Yes. Okay. Well, no, it's digital, it's cable. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a paper of Inikopolov and others, and they look at Russia. It's a very famous paper, also with Jurovskaya and Petrova, I think, his <coughs> wife, Ruben's wife. And uh, they look what happens in Russia, and they see, they use NTV. So the interesting thing is NTV, which is now a state channel, and was captured in the early 2000s. Uh, in 98, 99 was still a free channel. I was here and it was very free, very aggressive, very hot debating. And what they see, and uh, NTV is a Soviet structure. It was not built for television, it was built to something else, the cable network. It didn't change, it became a television. So you have a quasi-random allocation and they see that voters, th th so, they, so they know, it's based on antennae, I'm sorry, and they know where all the antennae are. And so you can, and if you know the inclination of Russia, you can calculate at every point how strong the NTV channel is. And so they related the strength of the NTV channel to likelihood to vote for Putin. Uh, because uh, at, that, at, uh, at that point, what, what happened, NTV at some point changed. At some point it was captured, and then uh, it began to make propaganda for Putin, and then you see people's voting intentions change very quickly. But NTV watchers just change their opinion very quickly all at once. Uh. So that's a nice paper. So what we need, we need a semi-democratic uh, semi regime, we need some captured media environment, we need an experimental setting, and we need measurable outcomes. So that's going to be Russia, which is kind of semi-democratic semi or autocratic in a sense. We're going to have some independent media, it's called TV Rain of Dost. So Dost means rain in Russia. Uh, it's an experimental setting, so we're going to do a random assignment. Uh, and we're going to have measurable outcomes electoral data and a survey. So actually we're going to do two experiments. We're going to do an individual experiment, treating people individually with some interview and a free trial on uh, TV Dost. And we're going to do a city experiment, a very large scale city experiment, where we treat some cities and we do not treat other cities. It's just really fun doing this actually. Uh, so just to uh, illustrate why uh, Russia is a good country to study this, other than we can do it, look at the blue line. So, uh, of course, you can talk about press freedom, and we have other countries. I, ex I gave you the example of Italy, so it's across the board. But there's another thing, because it's one of the few countries where it's really steeply decreasing. The freedom of the press in the 2000s, this is even in the beginning of the Putin uh, era, right? He came to power in July 99. He became president, uh, acting president on the 1st of January 2000. He became acting president. He became acting president, sorry, the 1st of uh, January 2000 and became elected president in March 2000. So initially there was a lot, he wa became president in a contested political time. But then it went down, 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 converging to the Chinese levels, which was still uh, very, very low. Huh? So we're always very happy about China, critical of Russia, but China has its own problems, right? <laughs> There's no uh, real press freedom at all. So Russia is a case of reversal. It's a case of reversal in terms of free media. And that, that's why it's interesting to study. Eh? You can say these people have been treated with less media freedom and propaganda. Let's do the opposite now. Let's treat some people with more freedom again and see what happens. Okay? Uh, just to uh, uh, motivate the paper any further, the, the, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a policy. Eh? This is what Putin said in a press conference, actually. Country to common perception, 
mass media is an instrument rather than an institution. So there's no institutional economics here. Eh? It's something we use. So he, 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 he claims that he is using it to maintain the monopoly of his party. It's, a, it's an instrument. Eh? And I think that's actually true for many countries. Bush is not special in that sense. Uh, but uh, it's an interesting case. So let's talk about TV Rain. I should have put my picture here. We were in TV Rain with the co-author, yeah, with the nice T-shirts uh, six months ago to talk about the experiment. But these are the people from TV Rain. Eh? Uh, it's very young. It was launched in 2010 uh, during parliamentary elections uh, of 11 and 16. It was present already. But it's very, very small. And, al and also, it's uh, not so accessible. First of all, you need internet. It's a pure internet channel. Secondly, it's paid access. So it's not free like Pervi Canal uh, or like NTV or any of the other channels. You actually have to pay, and you don't have to pay that much, but for people in the regions, it's actually quite a lot. Not everybody can afford it. Uh, uh, why do we know it's independent? Well, it's completely self-financed. It's not subsidized. People started up with capital, and uh, they get not extra money, not from foreigners, not from Russian oligarchs. It's completely self-financed. So the subscription pays for the production, which allows them to be completely independent, uh, free of any, uh, of any uh, money flows that could steer the message, say. Uh, the problem, however, is it's mainly watched in the capital for several reasons. In the capital, there's more people that are liberal-minded, Look, just look at the votes for Udinsta Rassia. And in the capital, the big cities, of course, there's more access to internet. So these two combinations, let's say demand and supply in a sense, uh, make sure that in the capital and big cities, uh, it's much more watched than in the regions, and the region is not very much watched. And we're going to exploit that. We're going to experiment in the regions, not in the capital. So, what did we do? First of all, we had to select cities we're going to treat. So we uh, said, okay, let's do European Russia. Let's skip out all the republics, the ethnic republics, because they are different in some senses. So let's look at, at, at uh, the ethnically Russian regions in Europe. Let's select all the big but not too big cities with a population between 100 and a, a half a million. Uh, we also want the, the region not completely dominated by Dienste Russia, United Russia, huh? you, are, you are United Russia. Uh, because uh, if it's completely dominated, the problem is it will be hard to measure because of course you will have electoral fraud uh, and, and ballot stuffing and we want to measure the outcome on, on elections, but if the elections are not, are not, are not, are not good, well measured, then it makes no sense to do this. And, okay, within these uh, 42 cities, what we're going to do, we're going to do an individual experiment, giving some people individually access to TV Rain, and we're going to do a city-level experiment, treating some cities and not others, and, don't s and then see what happens with the outcomes. Um, so we listed all the cities that... Con uh, uh, so why 42? Because we have 42 cities that uh, comply to these requirements. That's it. We took all of them. Uh, and then you're going to compare initially, are these cities not too different, right? Are there comparable cities on a number of axes? Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. Let me also talk about the individual experiments. Out of the 42 cities, we selected 12 random cities. So we say, okay, let's have 12 cities. Out of the 42, we pick them. That you see them on the map. Huh? Um, and then let's actually do a phone survey. And in every city, we have 100 people. That's, that was the idea. So we, we, we paid people to do this in Levada and say, OK, do you want to do a survey for us, please? And we give the number of questions. Uh, uh, 100 people per city, so you have 1,200 people. The requi only requirement was they need to be active internet users. So the one of the first questions was, do you watch internet? And people say, no, thank you so much, bye bye. Uh, uh, because of if you treat them with access to NTV, but they can't watch it in the first place, it's going to be very ineffective. So it's a very small experiment, actually. And we did two waves. The first wave in September 3-9, and the second wave in October 12-18. Why the timing? 
in the middle of this period, you have the parliamentary elections. This is, this is the thing, right? So you're going to give some people NTV, other people not, and ask them before, before you do that, how do you think about Dimitrasi? How do you feel about how do you feel about the situation in Russia? Do you intend to vote? Then you have the election, and then after one month you ask them again, and you can see at the difference, and that difference is going to be the impact of the Femida, because some people will have it and some will, will not. Okay. So and and how do we actually treat them? So we interview people, we interview these people, we ask these questions, we say thank you, and then some people, randomly selected, you say at the end of the interview, thank you so much for participating, uh, you're great. As a reward, we will give you a, mon a one month free trial to TV Rain. And the others you don't. And that's it. So it's just like a survey in the right time, where some get a free trial and some do not. And that's it. So this is it. In the end, this is the amount of people we got. So 12 cities, 100 people. So we have a bit more than 1,200. Uh, uh, in, some, in some cities, they made a mistake and entered a few too much. In uh, the second wave, we have we do a recall, but you can't, you can't get everybody. Uh, so there's a lot of attrition. We have studied the uh, attrition, whether it's biased. If, if like, some people are more likely to drop out than others, it seems to be unbiased, but of course that's a trick. One of the problems we have is, of the people that we treated, only few actually started watching. What helps us though is, there was a technical problem with NTV. So some people, so there's uh, 25 plus 41, so there's 66 that actually tried to watch. But 41 failed because it was a technical glitch. So that's perfect. You actually have the ones that want to watch, but some were randomly selected not to watch. <laughs> and some actually were watching. So this is the structure, right? I call all these people. These guys get at the end the free trial offer. Of we call them back later. This is the distribution. The, f the, the guys that got the free trial offer, only 66 actually want to take it. Only 25, 25 actually took it because the others uh, dropped out of because of technical glitch. Why do I show this? The only point here uh, of showing this table is there is no significance of anything. So what do you have to do if you do this kind of experiments? You have to show that the two groups, the treatment and control, are similar in any other dimension than the treated dimension. And so how did you vote in 2011? How high was the vote for Dinstrasi in 2011? Education levels, income levels, uh, gender, age, uh, how much do you travel, are you state employed? Where do you get your news? Do you get your news from federal TV, from the World Wide Web? Are you satisfied with the economy? Are you satisfied with politics? And you see that this is significance. So as far as we can measure and know in the relevant dimensions, how they think about politics, how do they vote, whether they get their news, what do they think about politics and economics, income levels, education levels, it's all identical, right? So these are, so we did not select some good cities and some bad cities. They are comparable cities in a way. Okay, now this is the first regression. What is, uh, it's not actually reg a regression, or uh, the colors are not very visible actually. Uh, okay, but you still see them, right? So, so what is this table? The first thing we kind of wanted to look at is, does it make any sense what we have here? So we have the, the first wave and the second wave, and we regress the second wave on the first wave. So I remind you, one of the questions we ask is, where do you get your news? And so, so what are the dependent variables? It's the answers on where did you get your news in the second wave? From TV Rain, from Federal TV, from Cable TV, from newspapers, from World Wide Web, from social networks like Frontaktje or uh, Niklas Niki. Uh, and then, of course, when you, and, and, and this is the first wave. So the diagonals, you expect to be significant, right? People that say in the, already in the first wave, I watch TV Rain, of course, you should also say it in the second wave. If in the second wave I say I watch Federal TV, you should also get in the first wave to be some, so consistent. 
And so the diagonal, uh, the significance means people, the, the first and second are consistent. They're saying the same things about what they're watching, where they get the news. But uh, look at TV Rain. Look at, this is the guy, the 25 who subscribed. This is the 41 who want to subscribe but failed. Boom. Uh, those that want to subscribe and subscribed, they're actually more likely to watch their report. Those that fail to subscribe are not more likely to watch. So this is just to show this, th the survey is consistent. Those people that retreated and actually subscribed also in the survey say they were watching TV Rain more. So it's just, this is just saying the survey makes sense, basically. This is the first actual outcome. So we're going to look at two, out we have many outcomes, but in this presentation, let's focus on two outcomes. Did you participate? That's the variable voted. Did you vote for Yedinst Russia, United Russia? That's the second one. And we do a probit, we do a probit controls. We have a whole list of controls, we show some. Uh, and then we have an IV. I talk to you about the instrumental variable in a second. And so what do we see? We see that those people that subscribed are a lot, this is a big effect, a lot less likely to vote for Yedinst Russia. Those that want to subscribe but failed, no effect. This is very good for us because it says it's not selection. It's not people that want to subscribe that are already more likely to be more critical of Putin. No, you actually have to see the stuff. <laughs> because those that failed, wanted but didn't see the stuff, didn't change their vote. Mind you also, this is controlling for their voting intentions, for how they voted in 2011, and their intention to vote for Udinstrasi. So we asked them in the beginning, oh, will you be voting, like in two weeks, for Udinstrasi? We asked them. And even controlling for that, we have this change. So it seems that treating you with this TV rain really uh, makes you think differently. And people actually vote less for Udinstrasi. Which was, we were surprised, actually. So, so we thought, uh, we were hoping to see something, but we thought it will be something small or negligible, because it's the individual thing, and we, maybe we see something in the city experiment. So. You directly asked the party they voted for, yeah. and they were honest. Yeah. So ah, you have to repeat it. She asked, did you directly ask the party they voted for? Yes. Yes. Um, at least in India, you know, you don't ask that question, whom did you vote for? Yes, yes, yes. It's, that's okay to ask? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Russia, you can do many things. <laughs> 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 that's about, Russia is also a nice country, actually. Yeah. Okay. These things are pretty free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, also, the people who subscribe were only 25. Yes, it's very, very small sample. I yes, uh, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the next, uh, you're totally right. So, so that's how we also did the city level experiment. And there we don't ask people. We look at the actual outcome. And you have hundreds of thousands of people. <coughs> so we kind of size it up a bit. Then it's less, in the, less, uh, uh, less uh, clear the channel, but much larger. So, so we have, you have these two things. But you're, you're totally right. It's a small sample, right? But this, these things are expensive. Huh? You, have to, you have to pay people to do the surveys. So, uh, uh, the, the university wouldn't finance it, so we actually collected our personal money to do this stuff, and uh, uh, it's painful. <laughs> so next time we're going to go for a research budget, uh, and uh, if we ever do it again, do, do it really on a very grand scale. But this is very small. So we just paid for it ourselves. Um, now, some people say, okay, the subscription is not the treatment. Although you show that, uh, so people that decide if treated, to actually wanting to watch. That's a selection bias. So what could you do? You could run a subscribed, the likelihood that you actually will manage to subscribe on the treatment. So use the treatment, not subscribed. And then you still get an effect. The big one, actually. So if you, if you instrument the subscribed with all the variables here and, the, and were you treated or not, then it still works. So, the, and this is then, in that case, avoiding the bias you will get from some people saying, I get treated and I will watch, and other people, I'm, I don't watch anyhow because I don't want to. That, that, of course, will bias things a bit. If you take it out, this bias, it still works. So it seems to be very, very, it's a very stable result. Peter. Just a question on failing to subscribe. What was the technical 
reason and was yeah. it that some people might have persisted and found a way to subscribe whereas others gave up yes the first technical yes 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 so uh, there are two explanations for it it depends on the technicalities and depends on the people or a combination we don't quite know there are a few indications though there's one thing here um, that those people that failed to subscribe then started to read more newspapers <laughs> So you treat the people, you say to people, you ask them a question about uh, NTV and say, watch, uh, watch uh, about TV Rain, and say, here, watch TV Rain. They try, it doesn't work, and they start to read more newspapers. So it's kind of interesting. The treatment has an effect, but it kind of deviates from the targets if they don't manage to do it. Yeah. Uh, so, but so the honest, and they also start to uh, uh, go more in contact. Yeah. So there is an effect of the treatments. But since they don't manage the digital thing, they start to do other things, which is kind of funny. But uh, on the real content of your question, we don't know whether these are more stupid people. There's no difference in education level, it seems. But maybe they are less technically savvy, or uh, maybe they're in places where there's more problems with uh, the, the internet. We don't know. We don't know. So, yeah. So that's probably why this is the most important result. This is pretty cool that people can say, but the fail to subscribe is endogenous to other things, and we don't know these things. Yes, and that's how we do this. Genial. And how they voted, do you know? Like, they didn't vote for United Russia and what? Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Know, or they uh, didn't vote. We know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know how they voted, but we're not going to show that. Yeah. Why? Uh, well, uh, it's the other parts are all very small. You have Grasdanserstotte, you have Jablke, you have like five small liberal parties. And the no, but so, but so remember, this is 25 people tweeted, and th they're spread over five small parties, so you'll have three there, f three there, two there. You can't do guess on that. Not really. I mean, the standard errors, it just doesn't work. No. If, you, if you do that on a grand scale, it would work. In the city level, we have the, we have the results for liberal parties, actually. So what are the controls? Uh, I say we control, I showed you the most important controls, right? Like, how did you vote last time? How did you, what was the intention to vote for Putin? Lots of control for income groups, education, gender, uh, uh, age, satisfaction with the economy and politics. Your source of news, so the initial source of news is included as a control. You control for what, what, what do you say you get your news from. Uh, uh, also, if it's a state employee, so, all, uh, man, so one of the things could be state employees are less likely to be able to do it, but that's kind of controlled for. So the wo the, as much as we can, we try to control for things. But of course, it's a small survey. It's only 10 questions. Because we didn't, we didn't want to uh, exhaust people. I want to honest, uh, honest answers, yes. OK, uh, so, so this control is a little funny. Uh, yes. If you're a state employee, yeah. my vote is still anonymous, right? Nobody knows yes, my yes, vote. Yes, yes, yes. So why would I be less likely to be able to vote against United Russia if I'm a state employee? Nobody can see my vote, right? Uh, but just to con it's just a control. We have no expectation on what the story I told you is my interpretation, but we don't need that interpretation. It could go either way. We just we even don't show it. So in the request, we don't even show it. It's like in the yes, <laughs> yes controls. Huh? So, we don't, so we don't attach too much imp importance to it. But you could actually look into it and make a story out of it. But that's not our intention of the paper. Our intention is really to look at free media. Not, not at state. We could look at that state, employment, and voting behavior, but that's maybe not something you want to do. Uh, OK. So, the, so summary, the inverted experiment seems to show the following in a robust way. If you subscribe and watch TV Rain, it's associated with lower probability votes for the ruling party, but no effect on turnout. It seems to be causal, and it doesn't seem to be self-selection, because we instrument it with just the treatment. So it's just driven by the treatment, not by your decision to actually watch. Then it's still there. Uh, it's robust to all the control robbers we have. But especially, and interestingly, we are happy we did this. In the, in the beginning, we almost forgot it. But we asked them about their intentions to vote and their preferences before being treated. And if you're controlling for that, it works. So it's no, there's no, that means there's no selection bias here. Uh, we control for and all that stuff. Okay, so we said, okay, this is cool, but it's so small. S Shivi asked, uh, it's only 25 people. Yeah, it's very small. So we had to hope more people would actually subscribe, of course. So next time we have to do a much larger survey, if we ever do it again. Uh, but then we said, can we do something else? And then we came up with the following idea. You have all these cities. Why not treat some cities at the city level? How could we do that? Well, 
TV Rain, we convinced TV Rain in the election time to give a one month free trial in these 42 cities. Nice. And then we ran a banner campaign on Frontakte. Every one of the cities has a city group on Frontakte, which is the Russian Facebook. And so we selected, we selected some cities, and there we ran a massive banner campaign on Frontakte about TV Rain. In the Happy Channel, it's not political message, the Happy Channel, please watch it, it's so cool, free trial account, and we did not run the banner campaign in the other cities. So they all have the same free trial. But some got information about go there, and others don't. And then the question is, do we see the effect of that on the election results? Da -da -da. <laughs> so that is the city idea, right? So we have these 42 cities, they have one to five electoral districts. <coughs> Remember between 100,000 and 500,000, so there's some size difference. Uh, we have these uh, two time periods, 2011, 2016 elections. And so we're gonna take the 2011 for a given. And we're gonna, basically the question is gonna be uh, the, the change between 2011 and 2016, can we explain this by your experiment, uh, in a way? So we're gonna treat 15 cities with this free trial option and with an advertisement in contact. Uh, five cities only received the free trial option to test for advertising, and the other, uh, f uh, uh, like 22, have no free trial. Uh, so you have like a, it's in layers, right? So some, some cities get nothing, some get a free trial, but you have to find it. And some get a free trial and we tell them, hey guys, here it is. Please go there. This is the banner campaign on contact you. Uh, this, this is expensive, Jesus Christ. So we, have, we actually make a little movie with people, uh, important people in Russia, well-known people in Russia, telling about the TV rain. So, it's a, it's a, so you have to hire an advertisement uh, company. Making this movie, you have to pay these people a lot. Uh, to actually do this. Uh. So it says uh, a month uh, free of uh, uh, Bless Platner, uh, free. Uh, um, uh, and they're making, uh, they're making, uh, they're making a story about it. It's so, so nice to watch. Uh. So, okay. Uh, the first thing to we, we need to know is, did it actually work? So we run a banner campaign, we can count the clicks, hundreds of thousands of clicks, but two people actually go to the website, right? We want to know this. Interesting enough, today with Yandex and Google, you can see all that stuff. You can see every click. And this Yandex Analytics, you can actually see from this website how many people went to the TV Rain website. How long do they stay? How many new computers, individual computers, logged in? How many pages do they visit? So you can see the effect of the banner on activity. Ah, this is it, huh? Eh? Uh, watch. Telekanal Dorst, free the whole month. Yeah. Free the whole month. Yeah. That's, the, that's the banner thing. <coughs> and so we, well, okay, that didn't tell that, we post in the city groups. So every city that we have has a city group where they post things about the city, uh, uh, activities, some protests, some things they're happy about, things they don't like, and there we post our banner. This is just to, uh, now, okay, the cities we treat and control we're going to ask them some questions. Uh, uh, no, no question. We're going to look at the election things. And so we have city population in the two elections. This is the Moscow, uh, capital of the region, turnout, how many liberal votes, um, how much people actually went to the website before and after, number of contact users, salary, and so on and so on and so on. Some things are actually significant. That's in fact also what you expect. So, you, uh, so the idea is nothing should be significant, but remember, this is statistics, right? So you have more than 20, uh, 20 variables, if, and so you expect uh, that uh, every, in every 10, there's one just randomly will show up, right? So it's not bad that there are a few. If nothing will be there, it will be very strange. Uh, so it seems that there was a difference in inflation in 2016 between the tweeted and non-tweeted. That, that's how it turns out. Uh, and there's a difference in average salary, but look, if you look at the number, it's 3.05 uh, and 2.97. So it's a difference. It's significant because you have lots of, I mean, the small standard errors, but it's a sm very small difference. I would call it negligible. Inflation is different, but uh, how much is it different? Well, 6.58% uh, and 7.32%. So it's less than 1% difference in average inflation. Just the standard errors are very small. So we don't think that matters actually for the outcome. 
but uh, this is the honest uh, outcome. So again, the same thing, control and treatment, you're going to compare on the number of dimensions that are important in our regression. And you see it's more or less identical. Huh? Okay. So how are, we going to, how are we going to measure the effect of our treatments? So you have the election. What are we going to do? We're going to look at TV rain and going to measure how many people come from these cities. Because you can do this. You can, in, in Google and Yandex, you can see how many people come from where. Uh, so we're going to measure 30 days before our treatment, the banner campaign, how many people go to TV rain, what do they do? And then in the period after the treatment, we're going to measure, okay, what is, what is the new activity? And you can look at the difference. So this activity minus this activity is the effect of our treatment. And then you have the election. So we do this, the treatment right before the election again. Just basically two and a half weeks before the election. And then we see, do we have an effect? So very, so actually the, the interesting thing is the treatment, the treatment is very short. It's not like treating people for two years with different matches. It's like two weeks and see whether there's an effect. So we're going, the first thing we're going to do is look, look at the difference, this minus this. So that's what we say here. The change in visits, uh, we're going to uh, look at the effect. Huh? And this is what we see. So we look at, at uh, and so in the website of TV Rain, we look at the change in the number of visits by city origin. The, uh, the change in the number of visits, so this is... Uh, this is number of actual visits, this is number of individual people, computer numbers, identities visiting, IP numbers. This is the number of new visitors, new IP numbers showing up. And this is the number of pages per visit. And you see that our treatment really works. And so, and the, the, that's why we have the free trial only, right? You have 15 cities that get the free access and the, the, the campaign, and five cities get the free access but no campaign. And you see that it's the campaign that makes a difference. So compared to the free trial only, the free trial with the, with the banner campaign of Contact has more visits, more visitors, more new visitors, and more pages per visit. Actually, the interesting thing is with free trial only, the number of pages per visit also goes up. Because people don't know about the free trial. So there's not more visits, not really more visitors, no new visitors. But some people that go there accidentally see it's free and they stay longer than in the past. So the few that got there stay long because it's free. So that's exactly what you would expect. That free trial works only on how many pages people look per visit, but you will not have more visitors. They will just watch more pages. Why? Because uh, TV Rain has some content that is always free, like 30% of the website is free, and then you get a paywall. And in these five cities now, with free trial only, the paywall is gone. So people are going to click more and see more stuff because they can. It's, uh, it's free. But then there's not more people coming the same amount of people come to the website. So the, when we saw this, we were really happy to say, what? This actually what? This made me think completely differently about, so I always ask myself, why do people advertise on Facebook and Google? N it doesn't work. Nobody reacts to that, but it does work. You run a banner campaign on contact, and people react to it uh, on a, in a massive way. It's a big effect. Uh, OK, this is the variable that we're going to use, actually. We're going to use the number of new visitors to look at the effect on election outcomes. So now look at something very simple. Uh, so we have all the controls again, all the controls. I just showed you in the big table, with the 20 variables, they're all uh, in the regression. I'm not going to show that regression. And then we're going to just look at the, the turnout of people, but that could be manipulated by ballot stuffing. We're going to look at the Udin Strasia votes, and we're going to look at liberal votes, Shania. Uh, and what we see is, if you look at the free trial with ads dummy, there seems to be an effect on turnout and on liberal votes, but not on United Russia votes. We have 158 polling stations. So if you ask why 158, well, we have, of course, only 42 cities, but in these cities you have many, many districts. And we look at the electoral district level. You have a question. And who are the liberal parties? Defy all the rest. So you have Yabluka is the biggest one, and they have two, two things called like Grazdanskoya, mm -hmm. very small mm -hmm. things in the regions. And then there is a, a 
something I didn't, I'd never seen before, a very small part in like in five cities. So there are a few of these like uh, and small. And communists parts. like no, 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 no uh, not Zhirinovsky, <laughs> no communists, not these guys. So basically, they are the Nasletniki of uh, Yabloke and SPS. So South Provincial, they have some kind of Nasletniki in the region, some kind of uh, successors, small parties, and they are the, the liberal ones, essentially. Okay. So this is uh, nice, but okay, let's go. Uh, so what are like the uh, the controls? Uh, uh, this is the stuff we include. Uh, so we we can include more, of course. But uh, so we basically include the number of contact users to make sure it's not just. Uh, uh, savvy cities with lots of internet versus unsavvy cities. Uh, how many uh, people, the so size of the cities, and population, registered voters, and so on and so on. Some economic variables. Uh, well, uh, okay. Um, then what you can also do is uh, you can say, okay, why don't we do uh, fixed effects? Uh, and hmm, it still works. So the fixed effects is on the district level. Huh? And it, it still works. Well, let's skip this. Uh, so what we're now going to do is uh, we're going to look at something uh, more interesting. Uh, so remember, uh, remember this thing. Uh, uh, so the explanation is here. We're going to use the new visitors. So remember, I showed you this, right? This one, the change in new visitors. And instead of using just a uh, just uh, a city level dummy, you were treated or not, we're going to use the intensity of the treatment. How many new visitors did actually come? So this we're going to use, right? In the next set of regressions. So basically, you have this regression, uh, and we're going to use this uh, as an instrument. Uh, uh, so we're going to use uh, the new visitors treated with a free trial. So it's going to basically we're going to say, the variable of the treatment is not going to be the free trial, but the new visitors as predicted by the free trial. So the intensity of our treatment. So we do this regression of the new visitors on uh, the free trial with adds and, and all the controls, and then we're going to generate a predict from that. And the predict is going to be our main uh, variable. So the treatment is how many new people come because of our treatment. <coughs> And then that, that's what we do. So we do again the same regression. We explain the turnout, the Dienst Rassier votes and the Liberal votes. But now we do not uh, have here, you have a free trial. We just have uh, the variable, the predicted amount of new visitors because of the free trial. And, and the, 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 the advantage is it's not a zero one variable, it's a continuous variable. That's the difference. It will still be zero for the guys that were not treated. But it's not just one for the treat ones, it's a continuous variable. And some uh, get more effect, some get less effect. And then what you see again, you see uh, that results hold up very strongly. You see the turnout goes up. Uh, so basically we were, we were puzzled. So we said this is problematic actually. Because in the individual results, there's no turnout effect. But there's an effect on United Russia votes. And in the city experiment, there is a turnout effect but no effect on United Russia votes, so it's not consistent. What is going on here? One possibility is that the people of United Russia, if they see they do not get enough votes, add some votes to the boxes. If they see, oh, Putin is not having enough, you're going to do some ballot stuffing. So it could be electoral fraud. Um, so I will have to show you something. on. So what did we do? Okay. We have all three, yeah. So there's a recent paper publish, published in uh, Science Advances uh, on voter rigging in small polling stations. It's not, it's not a, a paper about Russia. It's a statistical methodology if you have electoral data on the, on the polling station level to make an assessment about how likely it is there was ballot stuffing. How, how statistically unlikely it is the result is not rigged. So it's about rigging election results. And they apply it to a whole set of countries. Um, and this method, it's just published, we used to look at our polling stations and see whether we have any rigging. 
but that could explain the results. This is where I was, right? Okay. How do I do this now? Control L or something? Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing we did is, okay, let's calculate. So you have, you have two types of, of electrofraud. You have the ballot stuffing and you have the extreme electrofraud. Basically, these are the polling stations where Putin gets close to 100% of the votes. And these are usually like hospitals or prisons or, and then you know this is something really strange, right? So we control for both. And you see that, uh, that they, are, they matter for the outcome, but they do not change the things uh, very much. And then we said, okay, but so this problem is going to be much more pronounced in those cities where Putin has a very large share of the votes. So that we, run, we run our regressions, but only on the polling station level, where Yudhistrasi has less than 40%. So where there's some competition and some monitoring going on. Uh, so what is the effect in cities where there is less than 40% of voters voting for Yudhistrasi in 2011? And then all at once, you see there is a, the turnout effect is gone. But electoral fraud shows up as a big fireball at the polling station level. And the Udinstrasia uh, vote pops up again. That's very strong, actually. So it seems to be that our, our massive, it was a really massive campaign of contact uh, had an effect. So this is, we, we, I'll come to the economic effects, but it, it's as high as 3 to 5% of the votes for Udinstrasia, the, the difference. So it seems that in some cities there was a reaction by the regime by actually adding some Putin votes to the boxes. And if you control for this effect in a purely statistical way, not just uh, uh, so you just run this, uh, this procedure in R at the polling station level with all the data of the country and look at the outliers, you see that if you do that, the electoral fraud explains the turnout effect. The turnout effect is gone. And if you grow for electoral fraud, the administrative votes effect is back. Uh, and you still keep the liberal votes. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, so you lose some studies, right? Remember? You have 158, uh, sorry, uh, pl uh, polling station district. You have 158 in district, and uh, we lose, so we have 114. So the difference between 158 and 114 are the guys that have more than 40% votes for the Instrasia. So actually many, 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 many districts uh, have the Instrasia less than 40%. 114. Many people don't know this. But there's a few districts where they have 100%, and that's why they get majorities. If you take this, this out and you control for fraud, you see that the result, again, is completely consistent with what we had before. So this is kind of uh, also, that was kind of interesting, we found. Um, so it's for the, all the 29 cities, right? But, so, but there's a difference between cities and uh, these, uh, these things here. It's districts. Huh? <coughs> So, so the next thing we said, okay, let's go one step further and let's control for inflated turnout by like a two-stage regression. We can do this, right? So in the first uh, stage, we're going to try to explain incremental electoral fraud. Huh? Um, and basically, uh, and so, so what is the dependent fab in the first stage turnout? So, so how does it work? We have two stages. In the first stage, you're going to say, can I explain turnout with all the variables plus ballot stuffing? This is just a variable at the polling station level generated by a statistical procedure according to this paper in science. And yes, there's a, a very big effect of incremental electoral fraud on the turnout. And then let's do uh, the instrumented turnout, right? Let's, uh, so let's do the turnout as predicted by the fraud. Eh? Uh, and include this in the, in the regression, and then look at the effect on the Dinstrasia. Uh, so this is again uh, for, all, for all the cities. So basically, how did we work? We see for all the cities, the effect is not there. They said, they said 10 minutes, I said yes. <laughs> I see people watching, what is he nodding about? Uh, so the first thing we did is look at all the cities, and, and all cities strange, our effect is gone, the fact we had the drill treatment. Then we say, look only at the cities where we think there could be fraud. And then the effect is back. Then say, okay, let's look at, if that's true, let's look at all the cities again and correct the turnout, instrument the turnout with the fraud. And that's what we do now. We have again all the controls and stuff. Then you see that the, uh, so you cannot, of course, show turnout results anymore. That's, that's instrumented now. And then you control for the turnout. 
So here we didn't control for turnout, right? Turnout was one of the outcomes. And we, we grass. And we're gonna do now, we're gonna put turnout on the and the and the independent variables, but instrumented with the fraud. That is the trick we do now. And then you see again, uh, it matters, huh? uh, and the effect is really back. So, and you get actually pretty high R squared. It's not a big model. It's not like we explain some of the variation in the election outcome. Actually, we explain most of the variation in the election outcome by, by, this, uh, by this TV rain effect. Uh, the more new visitors you get because of TV rain, controlling for electoral fraud has a massive effect on the votes for Yudin Strasia to the extent of 3, of 3 to 5 percent of the votes for that party. Well, they have an average 40 in these regions. No, they actually have more. They have like uh, almost 50 on average in these regions. Uh, now, of course, to be completely sure that this is not just driven by some, something else we're just forgetting. Maybe we forget something. Maybe something is going on that we didn't understand. So what you could do is what we call a placebo. You could do exactly the same regression, but on the, on, so with the same regions, but on the previous election, comparing 2011 with the one before. And of course, there was no TV rain treatment. Uh, so we cannot, uh, but we you can still look at uh, the visitors, right? You can still include uh, all, these, all these variables we have. So you just do it on, on, the, on the turnout. So what you basically do is you change this. The turnout, the, uh, the UR votes, liberal votes, are the one for 2011. And maybe, just a re maybe we just capture a regional pattern and just regional things we did not control for or driving everything. But there's nothing there. Nothing there. There's something actually here, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's negative and uh, it makes no sense. It's just a, qu a quirk, right? So the effect is gone if you do placebo. So it really only happens at the moment we actually do treat, not before. We also should try a placebo after, but then you have to wait for the next elections in four years. Yeah. Oh. So I don't understand this variable free trial only because the free trial was only given for this election. So this is no, no. actually not yes, yes, just yes. around. So, so what we do is we, we take the variables of the new visitors that we see today and the free trial that we did today, but uh, we run it on the election outcomes in 2011. So beca because the, the point is, if the election outcomes show a regional pattern that is correlated with this stuff, just by luck, it should also be there in 2011. That's a placebo thing. So, it's so, so people don't react because of the pill, they react for other reasons, they're just different people somehow, in a way we didn't observe, and that's why they react to the pill. That's the idea of the placebo thing. D does that answer your question? Or not? You, you can talk about it more later. Lena? I, I have a question about placebo uh, yes. regression. So maybe I just di didn't understand it. But in 2011, the condition was very different. I mean, that uh, the attitude of citizens were different because it was before this crisis. Yes, 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 yes. But it doesn't influence. The, so maybe now, y so this. I yeah, 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 yeah. So the perfect placebo doesn't exist. The, the idea of the placebo is just. Imagine that our result, this result, is due to some variation across regions that is correlated with our TV rating, but there's nothing to do with it. Maybe some regions are just more likely or less likely to vote for Dienst Russia. For some reason, not in our 20 controls, but it's a regional pattern. And we just say, okay, let's repeat the regional pattern the 2011 ones, it's highly correlated over time. Let's repeat the regional pattern in the placebo and run the same variables. And if it's just a regional pattern that is resilient in time, we, sh we should get the effect again. What you're saying is 2011 is a bad comparison group because things have changed in the meanwhile. You're totally right. But that's the only thing we have. This is the only election we can compare to. We could also compare to the next one, but, but it's not there yet. And by then, something else could happen again. So it's never perfect, right? So, but this is the only thing we have to do. It, maybe we should call it placebo-like regression. It's not a real placebo. It's, it's placebo-like. It's assuming there is some regional pattern that did not change over time. Could that explain the results? And the answer is no. But you're saying it changed over time. Yes, in that case, I have to raise my hands. Um, Okay, 
So what is the summary? Uh, and then I'm going to be about uh, to be wrapping up. If you, do, if you give people local extra TV rain, supplement it with banner campaigns, with advertisements, it reduces the popularity uh, by 3 to 5 percentage points. It increases the shares of the liberal position with 1.7 to 1 percentage points. The rest is going to Komnist and Zhirinovsky. So, also, just having a free trial, free trial has no effect. It's the free trial in combination with the banner campaign. Uh, we also observe uh, increased turnout in treated studies, but that could be due to additional electoral fraud, uh, to offset the loss of votes for the ruling party. So the nice thing is we had no intention to influence the regression, the elections, right? You're just, we, having, we were having a beer in the karaoke a year ago, say, let's, this is interesting, let's do this. But it turns out, if we could believe the result that we actually did influence the election outcome to some extent in these cities, and that, uh, that uh, the party reacted by increasing electoral fraud, which is a bit shocking, I find. Uh, now, in any case, the nice thing is, you can do this. We didn't manipulate, right? We did not change the messages of TV Rain. The only thing we did is, look, this thing is there give some people access. So it's not manipulation in any sense. We didn't tell TV Rain what to show, that's all. So that's why we have to do the content analysis. And there's the two more slides I have. Uh, just to show why this has an effect. This is the September 15, 2016, close to the elections. And this is the news. The Pervy Canal and TV, these are st state channels by now. This is TV Rain. There is some agenda setting going on. Look at the news. Putin calls on the Russian population to vote for September. Putin calls on the Russian population to vote for September. So this is the, the, the items in the news on that day. Infrastructure development in southern Russia. Infrastructure development in southern Russia. Uh, US athletes have been doped. American athletes were doped during the Rio Olympics. Ceasefire in Lugansk and Donetsk ceasefire in Donbass region. Uh, Syria, Syria, Aleppo. Presidential action, yes, medical history, US campaign, power, Hillary, health problems. The items are the same. It's pure propaganda. They just scramble them a bit to make it less obvious. It's actually not the secret. It's known that Putin calls the, the state media every, every Monday. They're called Putin and they discuss the week and the schedule of the week. This has been described in, in published literature. So, and you see it in the news. They, so they, they manipulate not by lying, but by selecting the topics. TV Rain did something about the Dutch of Medvedev, which is 30 billion. <coughs> you won't see that on NTV. Something on an explosion in St. Petersburg, something completely random. A big inflatable moon was flying through the streets of whatever. <laughs> Some entertainment, I suppose. Then, the Vnukovo Airport guy, you know the scandal? The, the boss of Vnukovo Airport was, with 20 of his people, was uh, creating a, a kind of a contraband, a smuggling operation with Turkey for 20 billion euros for many years. They were captured. At the moment they came to the airport, he tried to flee. He tried to go to Kazakhstan. A, f uh, a few weeks ago, he was captured. No, a few months ago, he was captured on, in Omsk on the border to Kazakhstan, and he's now in jail. But that didn't make the news <laughs> anywhere. It's, it's a, something big in any country that would be on the front page everywhere, but it's only on TV Rain you can actually see this. So that's why people change their minds. Uh, if you look at what they talk about, and that's my last slide, and then I promise to stop. Um, this is, this, so this is days in, uh, in September. This is day of the election. 18th. So what do they talk about on TV Rain? Is it, all the, is it all the time opposition news? No, 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 no. Political news and election news is very small. That's the red thing. They do not talk about politics at all. Of course, this, on the election days they do. It's about the results, the outcome, they have the election show like everybody. But they don't talk about elections at all. What do they talk about? They talk a lot about foreign news, but in a different way. You could say uh, a less negative way. And they talk a lot about corruption. So they actually bring the scandals. Any news channel we bring in a, in a Western country, they bring the scandals. And you see a lot of scandal news. 
And I gave you that one example for one day with the content analysis. And that's why they, the people changed their mind. That's why the babushka of Nikita became so critical, right? See, it was two weeks he was listening, a scandal, a scandal, a scandal. The big guy of Putin, the Dacha of uh, Medvedev, what is going on, 30 billion, and she got angry. Yeah? Uh, so that's why it works. It's, it's more objective. And now I definitely have to stop. Thank you for listening. And this is Dorst Smoit Lorsch. Rain washes away the lies, right? That's, that's their, their, their logo, basically. Uh, okay, okay questions. Thank you. Uh, so thanks. So we have a few minutes for questions or comments. Yeah, Lena. So thank, um, thank you very much for a really extremely interesting <laughs> experiment. Uh, I, I have a question about uh, this choice of people to, to use, I mean, to watch TV. Yes. So your guess is that the only obstacle that they have is uh, that they have to pay. So if you, they don't have to pay, then they will watch. And uh, some one can yeah. argue that also when you w we watch something is just it so we have other al alternatives. So we also spend our time, our attention, whatever. Yes. And um, also my guess is that. Um, those people that use internet, they also can use some other yes. uh, sources. I mean, yes. uh, that are free. That still we are not in. At least limited with some yes. free channels. Yes. Uh, so I, I know that you have run different uh, regression. I have uh, used control, but yeah. uh, but I m my guess is something can be caught because this. Uh, example with uh, Babushka that he uh, has drawn, probably even though she has uh, access to this internet, but majority of them, they just don't are going not to use it because for them TV set <coughs> and the traditional channels are like... Yes, I, I agree, I agree. So I have two responses to that. When we designed the survey, we, we, had, we thought about this, that this is a problem. That's why we ask about how do you get your news. So we know where people get their news, at least we know where they get their news as they self-reported, and we control for that, both before and after. I mean, uh, so that's the one thing we, we can do about it. Also, that's why we do this IV. So this IV is progressing not on actually whether you actually did subscribe, but on your subscription predicted by the treatment. So the regression, subscription, particularly by treatment, in fact, so here the only thing driving it is the treatment. So all the things between the treatment, I give you, I say, you can have the free trial. And you're actually doing it or taking away. That's, what, that's why we do the IV, precisely for that reason. So I find it a very good question to clarify why we do this. There could be many things preventing me from doing it, having no, I mean, I mean all these people, so f again, when Leval did the survey, People had to build internet at least twice a week. So th this argument, pe some people have the internet, it's not there. Some have the television, it's not there, because we ask them. But still, there could be other things. People, some people just don't, don't like to watch movies on a screen. And so th but this, we, we try to solve by this instrumental variable approach. So it's indeed a concern. Yeah. And, and that's how we try to deal with it. OK, Paula? Yes, uh, it's uh, close to Elena point. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Uh, Coming back to this point, uh, it, is seem, it seems that you clearly have this issue about competition of uh, inattention. Yes. And uh, uh, you go addressing this point uh, through uh, the idea that uh, the exposure <coughs> of viewers uh, to this kind of... Uh, uh, mm, TV yeah. Yes, uh, could affect uh, uh, the way in which they decide to vote. Um, first, uh, Again, uh, are we sure that uh, uh, is only that uh, is only what you can control and what yes. you are uh, you are addressing? And moreover, remembering the paper by Barone et al, yes. uh, they did found uh, they found a very strong effect in terms of uh, age and uh, um, yes, age of the population and uh, less education. Uh, so. The, their effect is yes. stronger for older and less educated people. Yes. Could you uh, address a little bit more your analysis through yes. this kind of ele yes. elements? So, okay, since you have only 25 people here, yes, it's very hard to split up 
across uh, other dimensions, age and things. What we do, though, what we do, though, Paula, is it's in the set of controls. So in the controls, we have age and gender and all that stuff. So to the extent that age and gender would affect uh, uh, anything uh, of the outcomes, it's controlled for. Um, of course, it could affect your likelihood to subscribe. It surely does. Uh, so I guess all the people are less likely if they get the free trial to actually do it because the internet is on oh, and they have to they have to type in this code and they can't read the code or something. Eh? Uh, they need to, to ask their daughter, please help me uh, setting this up. So it will, it's likely to happen. But that's again why we do this thing. So, so th 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 this, this thing is basically saying subscribe only based on the treatment variable. Uh, controlling for age and in this uh, instrumental variable approach, controlling for all the other things. So basically, there the effect should be cleansed, we hope. Uh. Okay, and the last question. Thanks for the presentation. My pleasure. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't know, I have some doubts whether it's possible, like within two weeks, become so against. Um, mm -hmm dominant party voter and like maybe it's somehow connected with the fact that these people they were sort of like mm, uh, they were already m more opposition uh, than but wait, 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 wait. it's random treatment okay that's but two, two weeks treatments. two weeks but that's why we tell the anecdotes the true anecdotes of the babushka oh. and the sergei's babushka two weeks it was exactly two weeks Okay. Because like literature yeah. shows that yeah. I'm I'm but not like but, but it but shows okay. that if it's long period it doesn't work. But like are you sure that in two weeks you can well, well significantly change your mind? Yes, because that's what the results show. <laughs> so but okay, let, let, let me say this. Remember, people get treated with the same information all the time. So if it's only two weeks, that's completely different. It's like a wake-up call. We uh, presented this uh, results, actually not, not the full results, because we changed the manual to Timothy Fry two weeks ago, uh, who is in HSC in Columbia, political science. And he said, yeah, I believe it, but maybe the effect is not so much the new information. Maybe the fact is people look back on all the old information and this and kind of discount it. So maybe the effect on the babushkas what? They were lying about me all the time for five years because she's watching this for two weeks and all the other things are like, what? So what is the effect? Is it the effect new information or is the effect this content with the past information? If you understand what you've been watching has been managed or, or has been close to propaganda, that could change your mind massively about the past. So, and we actually, we're going to try to test this effect because we know what people watched before. Is, if it is about new information, then, then it should be the same for people reading newspapers, uh, going on the web. Is it about this content with the old information? The effect should be stronger for people previously watching NTV and Perry Canal. And we know what they were watching previously. So the next time we're gonna do, the next thing we're gonna do is see where the effect differs a bit for these two groups. And if it's there, probably the channel is not the new information, but unhappiness with the past information you are watching. So thank you for the question that allowed me to clarify this. Спасибо. Okay, thank Have you.